Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hello everybody, welcome to Hakim Halim's TikTok Live. Today is a Tuesday, today is on the 19th of September. Welcome on board to my TikTok Live. Um, this will be recorded and you can hear this post um, on YouTube and Spotify as well, which I will post later. I'm here to answer your property questions. And um, yesterday we did a bit of actually people coming on board. I thought that was more interesting. So let's start off today's session by asking anybody here who would like to come on board and chit chat with me. Doesn't matter whether you ask your property question or you ask your whatever question. Anybody who wants to join me and be my guest on today's TikTok live. Ting Wen is also here. Can I have the honor to be served by you? Sure, of course. I would love to serve, uh, be of service to serve you. Lah. Be of service to you. <laughs> Ane with bells. Hey, that one from Kuma, right? Ane with bells. <laughs> Ana bell become Ane with bell. Okay, guys. Peace be upon you. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Aim soul. Yasa. Oh, Yasa. I look at your body. I'm jealous, yeah? Mm. I just purchased a... Okay, 440 three-room at Woodlands. Eh, which area, bro? Last time I stayed there, you know. Near Triple Eight Plaza. Where do you buy your... Your uh, three-room? Bella... Bella Teo. I thought Bella Chow. Hi, bro. Can I check? I wanted to apply new for room flat. So do I need to apply HFE? Yes, Bella, you need to apply for HFE first. So now the requirement is whether you apply for BTO or resale, either one, you need to apply for your HFE first. Stacy Neo. Hello, Stacy Neo. Apply under seller and buyer column. Uh, seller and buyer column. No lah, apply under buyer ni. HFE is for buying. Buying, okay? Not for selling. Shalvin Sikara, would you say it's okay for a young couple to get the slightly older but within 95 year limit resale? Uh, yes. If you go for the ex most expensive one, this would be the newly MOP 5 year range. Okay. If you go for those which is like 20 years old or 30 years old, this is a little bit too old. You might want to get somewhere in between like between the 10th year to the 15th year kind of thing. Because this resale for, for young couples who are buying their first house uh, may not be their last house. For some of you maybe, but not for everybody. I imagine most will be not. It could be that the second one that you want to apply for a BTO. So you're buying this as a temporary. Maybe we will stay here for the first 5 to 10 years before we apply for our BTO. After 5 years MOP, straight away we want to apply for BTO or SBF so that we can get a brand new one. Now that's a better asset to keep even if you have to pay for a resale levy. Okay? So have this in mind. Lah. You want to make sure that after between the 5th to the 10th year, once you want to sell in the, into the market, you want to make sure that your product, your, um, your house is not too old. Otherwise, you will face the same problem lesser pool of buyers who can buy your house in time to come as com uh, because you bought a very old house okay so but generally if you are within the 95 year rule 95 year limit it should be okay but i would suggest you buy anywhere between have a balance uh, between the 10th 10th year to the 15 year max around there okay woodlands Glen. oh that's a very nice area good area bro near the mrt also right admiralty Young Gary, if you sell my flat, that means I must pay the commission to both seller agent and the buyer agent. No, you sell your flat, only you pay to the seller agent. Lah. Why you have to pay to the buyer agent? No need. The buyer will pay his commission to the buyer's aid, to his own agent. Thank you, fun play. Oh, I got my first rose. The Malay stall at Triple A Plaza Show. Oh, yeah. Asia Ghani, right? I love the nasi. Uh, apa? Nasi ayam penyek. And breakfast, I used to eat breakfast in the morning on weekends. I will order the nasi sambal goreng. Hmm, mana tak gemuk? Yeah, sedap bro, sedap. HFE approved. Sell first or buy first? Uh, John, I imagine you currently staying in your HDB resale. You want to sell and buy your next one, correct? Most of the time, sell first. Okay, most of the time. If your house have no problem selling, means there's no ethnic quota, uh, you, you are likely with the middle to the high floor kind, 
then okay to buy first. Okay, it's okay because got potential to sell quite fast. If your house really got the problem one, uh, facing the car park lah, low floor lah, uh, uh, outside the rubbish rubbish dump, uh, the kind of uh, people always avoid one odd shape. Uh, this kind of house, maybe it's a better idea to sell first before you commit to your buying. Okay, why? Because at the end of the day, you need when you sell first, the money needs to come in first to your CPF account before you can make payment for your buying, okay? Uh, for the timeline point of view, money need to come in first. So that's why sell first, uh. money come in, then same line, like you want to buy anything, I want to buy a car. Your salary need to come in money first, then you can buy the car. Uh, so it's the same logic. 125K viewer. Which one bro? Who got 125,000 views? Is it my life got? No, I uh, got 120 only, 22. Why got K? Thousand? Che, bro, don't cheat my feelings, eh? <laughs> okay, Lilia Firdaus, I'm getting my BTO in 2027. What should I prepare if I want to upgrade to EC when my house MOP? Cash. Lilia and Firdaus, cash. Cash is a very important component. I do not know in time to come what will the, poli will the policies change with regards to buying a brand new EC. I imagine you're talking about brand new one, eh? because resale is a different story. Okay, brand new ones are more difficult to buy. They may be cheaper in terms of quantum, but more difficult because of MSR. You cannot get as much loan as you can get if you were to buy a, a private new launch. Okay, when you buy a brand new EC, thank you Kak Seri. Wow, Kak Seri give me the most roses. When you buy a brand new EC, there's always a portion that you need to top up because brand new EC does not come, typically does not come with one bedder or two bedder, don't have. 3 bedder or 3 bedder plus study and above, 3 bedder, 4 bedder, 5 bedder, okay? So these bigger units, when you buy, naturally because of your lower load amount, you will need to top up. If you don't have the CPF component, you will need to top up in cash and that's where most people are stuck. They, they at least have to top up about, even after selling their BTO, uh, at least they need to top up about 300,000 minimum, okay? I tell you the, the normal cases one. 300,000 of cash and most of the time not many are able to do this unless they are very strong and disciplined savers like what you're asking now from now start saving or they have help somewhere else parents or relatives or friends or whoever that can support the top up the balance cash component okay alternatively then this wouldn't fall under the new young buyers category they are slightly mature probably in their 40s um, they have significant CPF component from their house or already saved up, not in their house, in their CPF account that allows them to buy. Also take note, uh, to qualify your income ceiling cannot be higher than for, uh, 16,000. Okay, 16, for EC, 16,000. Whether or not it will change by 2027, um, we just have to wait and see. Okay, okay. Um, Starboy. Can Singaporean marry? Thank you, Leah Fedos. Can Singaporean marry foreigner? Can. Which foreigner you want? But got kid born overseas, but get Singapore citizenship. Can I get BTO? Can. Because you form family, family nucleus already. You got at least one Singaporean, and then the son or the daughter will be an occupier. You have formed a family nucleus. Yes, you can apply for BTO. Okay. I applied under new buyer and my application was rejected. So how should I apply for HFE? Can advise me? I need to know why your application was rejected. What was the reason given? If no reason given, write into HDB and ask them why you reject me. Is it because I don't have any income? Is it because... Um, what else is there? Usually income lah. Is it because you don't qualify, you haven't met the age yet? Are you buying as a single? If you're buying single, you need to be 35. If you apply below 35, then of course rejected. So you need to ask them, what is, where is the hiccup? What is the source of the hiccup? Then from there, you can tackle accordingly. Okay, need to know the reason why first. Ella, you also stay in Woodlands. Ah, uh, yeah. Anybody here who last time went to school with me at Riverside Secondary? Anyway, apply HFE SBF. Before, oh no, cannot apply for HFE or SBF before MOP. Now, HDB is very, very strict. Huh? 
take care of my parents, move near parents, etc. You can write in lah. Nobody is going to stop you from writing in and to appeal. Also, it also depends how far are you from the MOP. One year more, two years more, three years more, four years more. <laughs> it depends how far are you. Okay, maybe, maybe if you ba- balance a few months left, it may be possible subject to strong reasons and HDB approve. But now these days, I don't see a lot of people getting approved these days. Last time, maybe a bit more. But because of the cooling measure and all this kind of thing, I think HDB is very stringent. Uh, Mr. Ayam, Hakim, what are the factors to consider? If I wish to, to what? What is UO? Upgrade? What is UO? <laughs> okay. Uh, Bubble gum. Hi, Hakim. Can married couple at age, if less than 55, buy two-room resale? Yes, of course. A married couple below 55 can buy any resale, any size, not just limited to two rooms. Okay? The only restriction is the two-room brand new one. Son. This one you got to apply direct with HDB. Brand new two-room flexi short lease. Ah, this one applies for those 55 and above. Two-room flexi short lease. This is the only limitation. Other than that, if you go into the resale market, it's an open market. You can buy any size. Subject to your affordability. Lah. Okay. Hmm, random phantom. Parents want their current age their current house to rent, okay? They want to move in with us and we get five room BTO, okay? Nothing wrong, can? No problem. Uh, if after 35, I can solo a BTO, right? Yes, Leo, you can solo a BTO. It means you can buy. Subject to two room only, uh, Leo, because you're single. And only can apply one time. Second BTO cannot really unless you are married couple. For singles, only once, Okay? Uh, Noah shared the live Hey, thanks for sharing my life Guys, if you like to share You can think of somebody That you can share this live with That may be exciting Or inf- interesting information for them With regards to answering property questions Please share this live with your other friends <sighs> Polaroid Any issues with doing 99-1 ownership with wife? Will HDB question this? HDB will not question this uh, you, you can't do you, you want to do with what is the purpose of doing this with regards to HDB? Because you cannot do decoupling. I can imagine you doing this with private property, private condo. But doing this with HDB, there's no reason why you should do 99-1. Most of the time, people do joint tenancy instead of tenancy in common. I cannot think of a reason why you want to do 99-1 for tenancy in common in a HDB. Maybe you can, you can share with me why you're doing this. Hakim. What are the factors to consider if I wish to upgrade to another BTO? There's only one major factor that comes to mind, Mr. Ayam. Whether you can get a good ballot number for the BTO. That's all. Okay, that's all. Uh, The good thing is while you apply and if you get the BTO, you can keep staying in your existing house. You don't have to sell first. Okay? Moving from HDB to HDB is the only portion that um, IRAS will not charge you for ABSD because technically you can for a small short period of time hold on to two HDBs provided you can pay for it okay uh, so when you're about to collect your keys for, for BTO if you have enough funds to pay or if you're taking a bridging loan in HDB's context it's called a TLS temporary loan scheme if you do this you can collect keys first while still holding on to your existing your old HDB Collect keys to your new HDB. Now got two. Then after that, HDB gives you six months to sell off your old one. Okay? That's all. Nothing much. You are in a good position if you can get a BTO because you're holding on to a subsidized flat that can potentially give you better returns when you sell in the future. Right? Okay. I was looking at some of the bigger flats in Woodlands. They were built 94 to 99, but not sure if too old. Stick to the 95 years because I do not know what is your age. Stick to the 95 years, you should be okay. How to calculate shortcut for this? Okay, ask yourself, what is your birth year? If your birth year is 1990, for example, you minus 4 becomes 1986. Okay, your birth year, 1990 minus 4. Minus 4, huh? don't ask me why, just minus 4. Then the answer is 1986. This means you can buy any house that is built 1986 or younger. 
86, 87, 88, 89, and so on. Okay, this is the shortcut formula. Okay, and man, asking for a friend undergoing divorce. Okay, upon divorce, can he buy resale HDB now on condo? Uh, he needs to write in. Maybe he's a, a special case. As a rule, no. But because he's going undergoing divorce, it might be possible. What I would suggest is while waiting for the divorce proceedings to happen, write in to HDB to request if this is possible, citing that this is a divorce case and then they, are, they don't have enough funds as a single, as a divorcee to continue buying another condo. As such, have to go back to HDB. So uh, request HDB for special approval. If my fiancé is working full-time, I'm in NS, can still get no cannot as long as you're working either one of you is working cannot get ready it must be both full-time study or one full-time study one ns can the moment you work okay i want to ask so waiting for divorce proceedings can apply for two room flexi no now staying three room okay guys for those of you who's going through divorce or have friends or family members going through divorce here's the sad thing huh? following the procedure hdb ruling and following because before you are officially divorced, proceeding means heaven official, okay? Before your official divorce, you are considered still married in the eyes of the law. As such, the house still belongs to the both of you. Heaven sell what? And cannot sell what? To sell, you need the court order to sell, right? Okay. Because of this, you cannot apply for HFE. The only way for you to know is maybe potentially you can apply for a bank loan. A bank can give you because they don't care about all these things. Okay, so to apply for HFE, you cannot know until you clear your divorce. Thank you, Khair Ham Hamid. Okay, S uh, get your court order, then you can apply for HFE. Get your court order, then you can uh, move on with selling your house. Okay, have to wait, have to wait for the court order. Okay. Mm, I am five room at Pongol, sole owner. Mom is only occupant. Can I buy two room flexi in addition to the Pongol flat? No, you can only own one HDB. You're already the sole owner. You cannot buy two room flexi unless your mom wants to buy. If you have already met the five year MOP, your mom can choose not to stay with you anymore and buy her own flat. And if she wants to buy two room flexi, yes, she can buy her two room flexi. But just take into consideration that at her age, is she still working? If she's not working, then she may not be able to get any loan. If she's still working and want to apply for loan, her loan tenure may be too short for her to have any significant loan amount. So likely, she will need to use her CPF to pay everything in full. But then you got to ask also, is your mom above 55 or below? Because if she's above, likely also, a lot of her CPF funds has already been tied down inside the retirement account. Okay? Um, if it is so, you might want to write into CPF to request, Dear CPF, how much can I use from my retirement account to purchase my house because I need I need a house, I need a roof over my head. Then CPF will reply you, of your retirement account, you can only use so much and so much. And then from there you see. Consider also whether you have any cash to be able to top up if any shortfall. Fast buy, Abang, I work in food panda delivery. Can I buy a house without CPF? You can buy a house without CPF. That's the short answer. That is in theory. Can. The answer is can uh, actually. Use cash. Whatever that you are missing in CPF, you got to replace with cash. If your CPF minimum need, for example, 100,000 for down payment, you got to replace the CPF with 100,000 cash. Have. If have, can buy. If don't have, cannot buy. Okay, usually the shortest way for people who are self-employed like yourself, contract workers, freelancers, is for the sake of your house, the shortest way is to actually get a full-time job and work for the 12 months. It's not that you cannot get a loan if you are self-employed. You can, but it's even more stringent. It's, unf it's, it's handicapped mm, because they will not consider... A it's a different formula. They will not consider 100% of your income. If you earn 3000 or even $5,000 per month, you chong swa every day, you come back and get $5,000. They will not consider the whole $5,000, you know. They would discount that. Instead of 5000 they will only calculate as if it is only 3000 They have a 30% haircut. 
They will calculate only 70% of the income component, but then you got no CPF. Then, then you got to have strong cash savings. Okay, so the answer is yes, can, but use cash lah. Okay, then the question is, can you answer the second question? Do I have cash? Okay, if don't have, tak ada, then the difficult decision, difficult to solo, but effective is for full, to get a full-time job. Just to get a house. Okay, guys. Uh, guys, if you don't mind, appreciate for those of you who are here first time. Uh, if you can support by following me up here on the top left hand corner and if you have nothing to do and enjoying what you have seen so far appreciate by tapping on the screen and giving me as much likes as possible so that this uh, live and my videos can go more to other people um, and if you're feeling generous uh, yeah, I will have no violent objection if you want to give me a rose or two rose or five rose whatever your heart uh, desires okay let me continue Okay, Hakim, I'm a buyer, okay, but the owner, seller, want to extend two months. Can I ask the owner for rental? Yes, technically you can. This is a private arrangement, okay? If they want to uh, ask extension for two months or three months, as long as you arrange privately, thank you, Kasari, can, thank you, Dudu Bear, uh, it can be done, okay? Up to you what you want to charge for rental. Both sides must agree. Seller must agree. Buyer must agree. Win-win, okay? Think win-win situation. Okay. Hmm. How much is a fair rate to rent for room in an area like Yishun? Depends. Are you renting the room only or the whole unit? I am not familiar. I haven't checked the latest results. So need to check first what's the latest transactions in Yishun area with regards to, for example, renting out the whole unit. If your area is nearer to the central area, then likely you can fetch a stronger rent uh, in the in that area. Okay. Hi, boss. Uh, who is this just now? Sophie. Sophie, if you want to DM me, I get my team to check for you what's the latest pricing in the market and then you can make an informed decision. Okay. Hi, boss. If I settle my debts with credit company a month before applying HFE, got issue to apply or not? No. Uh, I think it's you. this is in a good position. You settle any of your debts, you have documentation to prove that you did, you're always in a good position. No problem. I school in Riverside Secondary. I'm 40 now. Hey, who's this? Rosli. Hey, you are my senior. Uh, hey, thank you. Uh. Who give me this? Nick Lee. Thank you so much. Rosli is my senior. When I was in Secondary 1, you must be in Secondary 3. Okay, hey, property guy is here, bro. Nice to bump onto you yesterday and we had a picture together. Later, I show you the picture. Hey, you also have the picture. <laughs> we took the picture together, what? right? Okay, should I clear my EC loan since bank interest rate is so high? Iran, Iran, the fact that you are even thinking or clearing your EC loan means you have the ability to clear, right? If I were you, and I'm always biased lah, because I know that what I say is not what other agents going to say. If I were you, I'd be more than happy to clear my EC loan because I have the ability to do so. I feel like a boss. Not, not anybody, not everybody can do this, you know. Only small selected group of people can pay off their, their private property. And if you can do that, why not? Okay. Is Chochokang a good place for first house or better to save more and get somewhere like Sengkang or Ponggol? Uh... And Bariska, thank you, Neta. This is subject to you. I think, I think it should be less about whether the house can make money or not. Because actually, if you don't buy BTO, if you buy for resale, you, you don't expect it to be an investment for you. Do not expect it. You'll be disappointed. It should be, I would reference it on other factors other than monetary. Budget is one. Affordability is one. Eh? But I would also reference it, consider other factors. Am I going to be near my parents? Family. Uh, are they going to help me? We have plans for uh, grandmother, grandfather to take care of your children, for example. These are practical reasons, operational, day-to-day. -day. Is it going to affect your day-to-day? -day? Is the place near your workplace? Near MRT for you to Connectivity point of view, save a lot of time traveling because maybe you work at Sungai Kadot, for example, or you work at Tuas, for example, Jurong area, and it's very near. 
Yeah. So I would think about this kind of reasons rather than oh maybe Chochu Kang you want to send your kid to ACS ah uh, maybe. So these are considerations that you might want to think about rather than investment point of view. Nothing to invest. Ah, uh. resale HDB nothing much to invest. Okay. That's why they are cheaper than condos. Okay. Uh, hope of weeks. I got my approved HFE last two weeks. Congratulations. And last week they emailed me say they will remove my grants. Eh, very funny. Ah, recently a lot of people has been saying this. Ah, they got their grants and then their EHG got revoked. I am now beginning to be very suspicious. Why? Ah, why is that so? Why they don't want to give you your grants? They already given you. Now they take back. Did they say a reason why? Can you share with us? Bedok South Blossoms BTO good, of course good. So far in, I never hear anybody complain. I bought a BTO and lost money. Don't have. <laughs> Bedok is a mature estate, prime location. People love the area. Plenty of demand. So you can only expect prices to either remain strong or increase, go up in the future. So it's a good area to buy. If you have already gotten a good ballot number, congrats to you. Okay. Hmm. Shock lah. If SC want to buy BTO with foreign mum, have singles grant. Uh, first timer. Yes, yes, you have first timer grant. If downgrade, still need to pay. Need to pay what? Levy. If you're talking about buying BTO, need to pay levy. Then yes. For highest cash profit after selling, better to get higher or lesser loan and tenure. If you're talking about cash profit, you want to maximize what you have cash in hand or in the bank. Then maximize your loan lah. Maximize your loan, maximize your tenure because you're getting more loan. Therefore, you can keep more cash. If you take less loan and less tenure, means you got to pay more for the house, uh, and you keep less cash. Hakim, to meet up with you, do I pay any fees? You know, you don't have to pay any fees for now, cause I don't charge people. Um, but typically, we arrange a Zoom session. Uh, the next, we we arrange Zoom session either in a day or sometimes in the evening. And then you can ask whatever that you want to ask. Okay, uh, drop me, alamak, drop me a DM, or you can WhatsApp me. My contact is in the bio, uh, bio profile. Okay. Hmm. Abang Insurance, thank you, Abang Insurance. Wow, you so nice, bro. Give me roses with your sunglasses, I'm all like that. Fu, handsome. For EC ninety nine one ah okay this one will make sense you can do ninety nine one for EC okay guys when you do ninety nine one ah just a just a small tip ah this is a big tip lah not small tip when you do ninety nine one you got to consider the CPF usage okay because later tomorrow when you want to buy over the one percent the CPF will come into play you know. If you only buy one percent, the loan amount you might not have enough loan to cover the the CPF of the other party. Okay, so uh, speak to your lawyers first. Sometimes it's not wise to use ninety nine one. Sometimes you got to strategically put a different percentage so that you can have enough loan to buy over the other person's share. Ah, uh, this portion, how you want to do it? You speak to professional lawyers. Ah, uh, don't don't come. Don't ask house agent. We are not the best people to ask how how uh, to structure this. Speak to the lawyers, okay? I also don't want to give you any legal advice. Speak to the lawyers to understand better how you want to do this, okay? Because uh, it's important for you to know this, and this one applies to resale, uh, to to resale um, private properties. Ah, uh. cannot do for new launches. Ah, uh. uh, for EC can, okay? How to check the ethnic quota? Very easy. You go to Google. You put HDB ethnic quota, then the link comes out. Okay, from there you insert the address, the block number, or the postal code. Then they will give you the ethnic quota. Okay, Abasa Basri, bro, I headache ah. My agent not sincere. A lot of things never update until nine months haven't settled my selling. How you like my Google translation? Not? Well, all I can tell you, Mister Abasa. Uh, call lah, call your agent lah. Speak nicely to him or her. Now ask ask for the latest updates. Ah, uh, <laughs> I cannot say anything else lah. I don't want to talk bad about other people. I think the best is is the communication factor lah. Give him a call, drop him a text, ask him to call you back. Ah, uh, 
Eh, hey, Mr. Agent, uh, Miss Agent, can you call me back urgent? Uh, just say urgent. Uh, then he will call you. Okay. Can a divorcee, no kids, apply for BTO? No, cannot. Because once you're a divorcee, you're considered a single, you cannot apply for your second subsidized flat already. Okay? Tombale on... <laughs> yeah, I purposely put Tombale Tuesday. See, got anybody uh, see or not? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Thanks for sharing information always. Your mom and father colleague in SBC. Yay! What is your name? I shall give your salam to them. Okay, guys. Uh, we have 20 more minutes. Uh, anybody here, I give, I give priority, like anybody here wishes to come on me on live and ask your question and then I can give my 100% attention to you as if you are already doing your Zoom session with me. Ah, give you first dips. Anybody here who is brave enough to come on board? Let me see. So far, I've got nobody. Okay, come. I officially invite you. Who wants to come and join me and ask your property question? Because there are so many questions here. I'll give you first dips. Priority to you. Okay? Uh, request to join me as a guest. Then I will accept you. In the meantime, I will answer the next one. Cha Bin Lim. Bro, BTO can hold how long? Because until now, one year plus, I haven't made down... <laughs> You haven't made down payment. Have you selected your unit or not, Jabin? Have you selected your unit? Then maybe yours could be a very big development. Uh, still taking long. Lah. Or maybe the HDB officer handling your case just, just resigned. That's why. Write into HDB to ask them why it's taking so long. Okay, write into them through the e-feedback e form. Uh, Nazrul. Hello, Abang. I'm 35. I have 107 CPF. 107,000 CPF. Can I buy three or four room? Nazru, not just your CPF, ah, subject to your income. Ah, this is very tricky for singles who want to buy. It okay, looks like your CPF is strong. If you're a first time buyer, you will qualify for the grants. CPF grants, you qualify for 40,000. Okay? Subject to you don't hit the income ceiling. What's the income ceiling for a single? 7,000. If you earn 7,000 or less, you qualify for all the grants. And HDB loan. If your income is above 7,000, then you don't qualify. Very, very difficult to swallow. But this is what I realized most singles. You cannot, your income cannot be too high, nor is it too low. If too low, you cannot afford to buy anything also. Okay. Wow, oh, really? I got no guess. Ah. All shy over here. Hey, no brave ones. Ah. Hey, anybody? Come lah. Come online with me lah. The best is you put video lah. Like, okay, you don't want to put video, at least can hear your beautiful voice lah. Okay. Mm. Can I find more than one agent to sell your flat? Need to pay all agent or the agent who sold? I wouldn't advise you to get more than one agent. Because most of the... If you get five or four or more than one lah, there is no incentive for the agent to give your listing a priority. Uh, you are just another listing. And most of the time, agents do this. They say, I don't care, I don't care. Lah. Just, I, I give you from agent perspective. Huh? Not all, lah, but a lot of agents do this. I, I just want to get the listing. So that when buyer inquire, I want to swing the buyer. Ah, I want to make the buyer and convert it into my client. I just want the listing only. I'm really not interested. Lah. Ah, so you will realize that the agent don't put in effort for your listing. So if you don't market it properly, you will not get the right buyers to offer you. Then you will realize that, walaway, well, take very long leh. Three months ready, six months ready, still haven't sell. All the offer like low ball only is because you have too many agents. Okay, nobody's interested to fight for your listing. Good agents are not interested to fight for your listings. <laughs> I tell you first. Only agents who got no listing are they interested to fight for your listing. Ah, never mind, never mind. I just want the listing only. Okay? Ah, so... Just a perspective for you to think about. Uh, Salam bro, what's your opinion on DBSS future? Good time to sell. Good time to sell. Of course, it's good time to sell. Because not many buyers want to buy DBSS. <laughs> okay? Not many buyers want to buy DBSS. The demand for it is not the same as your usual HDB. Yeah? That's why they stopped making DBSS ready, right? Handsome Hakim! Let be friend. Hello. Is it... Is it a good time to buy cryptocurrency? I have no idea, bro. Why you come to my property channel and ask me about cryptocurrency? I have zero knowledge on cryptocurrency. Even if I have also, I say I got zero knowledge. 
Okay, Hakim, can I engage an agent concurrently while waiting for SBF BTO results? You can. The question is, the agent want to work with you or not? <laughs> right. So, the best, I always tell my clients, the best is you focus on one. If you want to go for SBF BTO, then you go for SBF BTO. Because you are not able to put your mind in terms of buying the resale. Your mind said, eh, alamak, can get or not. Then, then you, waste, you waste your time, you waste the agent, you waste everybody's time. Then the agent eventually will know and will not entertain you. Because you're wasting his or her time. Correct? Uh, they only look for serious people who are, okay, no, I am focused. I am in need of time. I want to buy resale market now. If can, I want to collect case in four months time or earlier. Ah, like that. Thank you, Sharon. Okay? Mm, okay. Eh, serious ah, guys. There is 158 of you. None of you uh, want to come on board and teach chat with me. Ah? Come lah. Don't shy lah. Come on TikTok. Must participate ma. Yesterday, who was here? John McGuinness. Pete, Muhammad Peter Parker. And one more fellow. I forgot the name. Okay. Mm, what is the market value if I want to sell my Tampines 523A flat? I don't have the figures right now. But if you want to DM me 1D. Uh, if you want to DM me 1D, I will do a SRX valuation for you. And give you data of the recent transacted prices in your area for you to do some comparison. Okay, DM me. I'll 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 send the the data to you. Okay, mm. Geylang whole house four room HDB rental average price. I don't know, Jeremy. I don't have the figures now. If both income around eight k and OA hundred k, okay, combined income eight k is six to eight seven hundred. J, how old you? How old are you? This one is subject to your age also. Ah. Can you afford? Maybe. If you are young enough and can get the full 25, 25 years tenure. And if you are first time buyer with potential grants coming in. Yes, it's possible. Because you will at least have 80,000 if you are buying 4 room. 50,000 if you are buying 5 room. In terms of grants. Lah. What's the difference between staggered down payment scheme and deferred income assessment? Okay. One is to assess your income and to assess your grants. Okay? I should repeat one more time. Eh? One, deferred income assessment is assess your, in, assess your loan and assess your grants. The other one is down payment. Means pay the first down payment, the portion that you're not loaning. 20% down payment. Okay? Deferred income assessment, there is a criteria eligibility for you to be considered, or to, for you to be inside this uh, scheme. Deferred income assessment. You must be either both of you full-time study or maybe one of you in national service. Then can apply. What happens is instead of assessing your income now because there's nothing to assess, you're still studying what? Nothing to assess. No income, cannot assess for grants, cannot assess for loan. So what they will do is before you collect your keys about six to nine months, then they will assess. By then, you must already have a job, okay, for them to assess your income. So, that point of time, then they will assess for you to get your grants. Based on your income so much, you will get this grant so much. Based on your income so much, you will get loan this much, okay. They defer, see, ah, that's the name, ah. deferred income assessment, defer, assess later, okay. Staggered down payment is when you don't have the total down payment to pay. If let's say you need 20% down payment, you don't have enough. So they stagger it, split it, split it into two installments. Half here, half now, half later. When you want to collect keys, you pay the other half. Now you pay half. Collect keys, pay another half. Otherwise, you pay everything now. Okay? See the difference? Okay. Mm, time's up. Ah? Okay. Uh, guys, 10 more minutes. Ah? 10 more minutes. Hmm... Do you think government will lift up the cooling measure in coming years? Maybe. It depends on how the market is going. The reason why they have cooling measures is because why? They want to make sure that price do not increase at a very fast rate. It can increase slowly, gradually, but not at a fast rate because the previous time is very, very super duper fast. Good for sellers, but getting difficult for people to buy, for buyers, especially young first-timers, first-time buyers. Okay? Okay. Mm. Hi, boss. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for asking. 
Uh, if after buying BTO second time, upon retirement can apply BTO flexi shortlist, yes. When you apply for the flag list two room flexi shortlist, it does not include the two times BTO that you have already applied. Okay? Okay, guys, I I want to appeal for you one last time. We have five more minutes. I want to appeal for you one last time. Can we have somebody on board who is interested to ask your question so that I can bring you on live? And if you can see your if I can see your face, I'm happy uh, you made my day today. Uh. Anybody, please come. Ah, oh, now then I have. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, uh. first come, first serve basis. Uh. Sanuk. Sanuk is like the Sanuk kitchen. Uh. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Sanuk, how are you? Yeah, fine, fine. Thank you, thank you. What is your question, Mr. Sanuk? I feel like radio. Yeah, uh. I have this question for about almost six months already. Mm, and oh. I don't have any of my friends or anyone that I can rely on that has the same uh, scenario or position as I am having right now. Uh. Okay. Which is I'm going to get married in eight months' time. Uh huh. Okay, but I am getting married to a foreigner. Mm hmm. Okay, so my my OA right now I have about about close to close to eighty lah. Okay. Okay, I'm I'm twenty nine years old this year. Then I asked around uh my friends all this lah. Then I even called up HDB also regarding this issue, but they very I don't know lah, casting all lah. So I don't this one we put aside first lah. So they just just told me that you cannot apply now lah. You later married that you apply. So I like, I, but I want to know the proper like. Uh, procedure so at least I can get myself ready but right now I don't know like can apply or cannot apply why why need to wait after marriage or am I eligible or not eligible they never explain all this they just say no no you marry already I say no I'm not yet they say no after marriage then you apply but I don't understand like what's the what's the thing that I need okay uh, how old are you again Sanu? Uh, this year 29 29 yes and your foreigner partner is uh, is it a uh, Working here? Uh, no. Not working here? Yes. Under what pass? Ah? Uh, no, she, I met her abroad. I see. Okay. Yeah. I, I give you... I Hopefully, I can give you something that you can bring back today and understand a little bit, okay? okay. The rules and regulation for singles and for married couple is different. Okay. For singles, you, you have no choice but can only apply 35 and above. That's why, that's why maybe you hear HDB tell you, please get married first so that you can qualify as a married individual. Okay? Okay. Uh, okay. okay. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, mm. I cut you off for a while. Mm. Uh, it's because uh, I, I seen some of my friends, uh, they're not even married yet, but they already start to apply for BTO. I know I called HDB, they say I'm not eligible for BTO because my spouse is not a foreign. Uh, it, sorry, it's a foreigner. So mm. therefore, I can only apply for open market or... Uh, Two room flexi, which I don't want lah. Two room okay. flexi. Okay. I want at least a uh, four room, at least. Yeah. So this is the question that I have lah. Okay. Because I want, I want at least a four room. Okay, I understand. Okay, I explain both your BTO option and your resale option. Okay, you are now considered a single. Even if you can qualify now, you can only buy two room. Is that what you want? No, right? Okay. Then you BTO, you need to strike out already. Okay. Okay. So your only option now. Is resale. Resale, what size can you buy? Any size. Yeah, yeah, Two, three, four, five. Machine also can. You suka lah. You, what you want, you, you buy lah. Okay? Okay. But on certain uh, strict conditions, because your partner is a foreigner, when you buy, HDB will categorize you in one of the schemes lah. One of the category, if I can put it that way. Okay? As a single other category because your spouse is foreigner if your spouse was singaporean i got one category it's called the fiance fiance category lah but because your spouse is foreigner alama no category lah only got one kind of category if you, if we marry a foreigner it's called the single and non citizen spouse that's why it's difficult to answer this question it's because you cannot fall under the same singaporean category Mm. If your partner was Singaporean, different story. But only because your partner, because HDB, they give special treatment to Singaporeans. That's that's the main the main uh, advantage for Singaporeans. Lah. It's special treatment only for Singaporeans. So that's why they have all these many, many schemes. But I cut a story short for you. 
is because of your spouse foreigner status. That's the reason why they cannot put you under the category of fiancé fiancée scheme. So that means after I, I get married, then I can start to do all the things. On one condition, this one is very important, ah, and it's good that you ask now so that you can plan ahead. Okay, so no, your spouse, if you want, if you want to buy below thirty five, and I take it you want to buy below thirty five, okay, your spouse need to quickly apply for LTVP, long term visit pass. This one is very. Without this, you need to wait thirty five years old. Okay, so you better find out. Ah, uh, this one you cannot ask me. Ah, uh, this one under immigration, lady. Ah, uh, you better find out what is the procedure. The moment I get married, what are the documents that I need? How long is the process? Do I need to engage a immigration agent or whatever it is? You have to find all this information beforehand. Ah, uh, so that you can what is, uh, you quickly apply for this LTVP. The moment you get your LTVP, you can buy before thirty five already. Ah, uh, okay. So even if I get married. My spouse don't have the LTV. I'm still not allowed to buy a house. Yeah. Am I right? You can you can buy a house. Must wait thirty five lah. That's the the rules lah. The 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 ah uh, the status of the spouse matters. If I can put it that way, the status of the spouse, whether it's a PR, whether LTVP, whether work permit, social pass, matters. Ah, okay, okay, I see, I see. Hmm. Okay. Alright, alright. Can ah, uh, but for the for the grants, is there any difference between? Both Singaporean and one Singaporean and one foreigner. Oh, uh, of course. Both Singaporean more grants. Both Singaporeans what? One Singaporean half grant. Oh, half grant. Half of everything. Uh, half of everything. If the Singaporean get eighty thousand, you get forty thousand only. Because one Singaporean what? Right. <laughs> okay. Must be fair lah. They cannot give the grant to foreigner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I understand. I, I just thought <laughs> that okay, maybe she get the LTVP then ah uh, they consider as. No, no, it's still considered foreigner. Haven't become Singaporean. She must become Singaporean lah. You convert her to Singaporean lah. No, no, ask to convert to Christianity or Islam lah. Just convert Singaporean only lah. Understand, understand. Okay ah. Alright, can, can. Okay, all the best. Thank you, Sana. Alright, my God. My salam. Okay. Hmm. Who is our next guest? Hey, no more ready. All run away, ready. <laughs> okay lah. I think. I think that's about the, uh, all the time that we have. Thank you guys. Thank you for being here. I th- I hope uh, it has been very beneficial for all of you over here. And I hope you enjoy the conversation that I had with me and Sanok. Uh, a little bit more. I find this a little bit more interesting lah. At least got another person that I can talk to. Otherwise, I feel like talking to a, com- a phone only, you know, a phone screen only. I talk to a robot like AI like that. Okay, thanks for being here today. I hope you're gonna enjoy your evening and the rest of the week. Um, I'll see you tomorrow.